If you want to know extremely important updates for the Yosemite exams, EC50 certification, and for the upcoming match season, all you have to do is watch this video until the end. And if you like this type of content, don't forget to part that like button, hit subscribe, and that notification bell so that you never miss another video like this. So for the upcoming match 2023 season, there is a new supplemental application that applicants that are applying to certain specialties will have to complete in order to apply. The NRMP announced that between April to June, they will release resources for applicants on how to accurately complete this new supplemental application for the 2023 match season. And if you are planning on doing the USMLE Step 1 this year, it's very important that you know that if you do the USMLE Step 1 on or after May 2nd, you will not receive your results until July 6th. There is typically a delay in when you will receive your results when there is a change in the question pool for that exam. So because the question pool for the USMLE Step 1 will be changing in May, that's why there will be a bit of delay in receiving your results. And speaking of USMLE exams, if you are planning on doing the USMLE Step 2CK exam this year, then this update is for you. So if you are planning on doing your USMLE Step 2CK exam on or after June 29th, you will not receive your results until August 10th. So if you are a student and you need to receive a USMLE Step 1 results before July 6th or a USMLE Step 2 CK results before August 10th, then pay close attention to these dates and try to schedule your exam accordingly. So back to the supplemental application that I mentioned before. So for this new supplemental application, only some programs will be participating in this. So only some of them will be requesting this application, not all of them. And that list of participating programs will not be released until July. So if you're not already subscribed, make sure that you are subscribed to my channel and click that notification bell because I will be releasing a video as soon as that list is received. So if you are applying to internal medicine, general surgery, pediatrics, or any of the other specialties participating in this new supplemental application, what you should know is that on August 1st, that is when the supplemental ERS application will open. But remember that resources on how to fill out the supplemental application will be released much earlier in like April to June. So even though it won't be open until August, you can start working on your rough draft before August 1st to really ensure that you aren't rushing or feel overwhelmed in completing this supplemental application on time. And another important date that you need to know is that the supplemental ERS application closes on September 16th. So from August 1st to September 16th, that is when the supplemental ERS application will be open and applicants can complete this new application. Now let's move on to the extremely important updates for eCFMG certification. So in order to gain eCFMG certification, you have to pass OET. And the eCFMG has just released new changes for this passing score. So before April 1st, 2022, you would need to get a 350 on the listening, reading, writing, and speaking subsections. However, after April 1st, 2022, there has been a change. So if you are doing the OET after April 1st, 2022, what you now need to pass is a 350 in the listening, reading, and speaking subsections. However, you can pass with a 300 in writing. So if you have not done the OET test as yet, then this is very important for you to know. So make note of these changes. So if you applied for eCFMG certification by using the 2021 or 2022 pathway and your eCFMG certificate lists an expiration date in 2021 or 2022, 
This expiration date has been extended through to December 31st, 2024. However, if you do not enter an ACGME accredited training program by December 31st, 2024, your E7G certificate will expire and you will need to again try to meet the clinical and communication skills requirements for e certification at that time in order to revalidate your e certification. Another important thing to note is that if you complete your first year of an ACGME accredited program before December 31st, 2024, then your E7G certificate will no longer be subject to expiration. So it will not expire as long as you complete that first year of training before December 31st, 2024. Another extremely important update is that the E7G requires that IMGs meet the examination requirements for E7G certification within a seven year period. So this basically means that once you pass an exam, you'll have seven years to pass the other exams required for ECFMG certification. So this seven year period starts on the date of the first exam that you passed and ends exactly seven years from that date. This seven year time period is also applicable to those applying for ECFMG certification through a pathway. This means that your pathway application must be accepted within the seven-year period. If your application is not accepted within the seven-year period and you have a passing step one and a passing step 2C case score, that becomes invalid for ECFMG certification. So basically, you want to ensure that you pass your Yosemite step one, your Yosemite step 2C K and meet all of the clinical and communication skills requirements within a seven year period. So this is especially important for old IMGs or for applicants who really do their USMLE exams far apart. The ECFMG also specifically states that it is your responsibility to track your progress towards meeting these requirements for ECFMG certification because because the ECFMG will not notify you of upcoming deadlines to meet the seven year requirements. So it is your responsibility to know the date of passing your first exam and monitoring that seven year period on your own. The ECFMG will not notify you of that. And they will not notify you if your passing performances will become invalid for ECFMG certification. So if you plan on doing your USMLE Step 1 in like your first year of medical school and you're an IMG enrolled in a five-year program and then you work afterwards and ha have stuff happening, it's your responsibility to keep track of that because the ACFMG will not notify you of it being expired or not being eligible anymore. And to continue learning more about the USMLE process, all you have to do is click this video right here.